We are back out here and the long stage of the day, more than 20 minutes, these athletes will be working between three separate portions of one long event. We're taking a look at our women's team division. This will be their last stage on the day. Everybody's wrapping up. We'll go through lane assignments. Here in lane number one, Kim Rosenthal and Naomi Wisely, currently sitting in sixth place overall. Lane two, V Gabbard and Elba Vasquez. Lane number three is going to be your overall leaders, Blair Drum and Janae DeCausson. Lane number four and sitting in second overall with 94.11 percentage points. Corinna Perkins, Mallory Paytas. And lane number five sitting in 14th overall, Lupe Hernandez. How this first part of the three-part series is going to go, we got four total rounds. You saw they started with the sandbags down and back. Those sandbags weighing in, one of them is 125 pounds. Other one is 100 pounds. You can decide which athlete carries which sandbag. You can switch, just not in the middle of a lane. You would have to get all the way across. Once the athletes go down and back with their sandbag carry, they then approach the firing line where they start with their rifle from the top of the tank trap. Each athlete picks a side where they will shoot from. You cannot repeat the side, or I'm sorry, you cannot re repeat the location of where you shot from. So you can see Janae to the right of your screen. She is up top, chose to use that placement. She cannot repeat that in another one of her rounds. This one is a total of four rounds. 12 shots for the rifle. And then they will have nine shots with their pistol. Once they advance to the pistol, they will be able to stand in any style they want. Athlete's choice. Time cap, 12 minutes. It's a player on your left. Janae on your right. Overall leaders of the division and of the stage thus far. two athletes you typically see competing against each other in the women's elite division. Both podium athletes, both nationally ranked athletes. At this point, I believe both of them already have punched their ticket to nationals, so this is just an opportunity to team up with a friend. Get a check-in, more data, see what they need to work in before they go to nationals, which will be this fall in November. Dates have not yet been confirmed. This is starting their third of four rounds. If they complete their fourth round, and still have time within that 12 minute time cap, they then can earn additional points with sandbag carries in the remaining time. Earlier today when we were covering the elite division, we did see a couple of male teams earn a couple extra reps with that sandbag carry.
Luckily for these athletes, the sun has now come out and it has dried the dirt a bit more. Our athletes who had this stage this morning, I think had a extra challenge to tracking through the mud, but sun has come out. Less layers than we saw this morning. Here in lane two, V and Elba, their sandbags are actually 180 pounds. So slightly different as these two athletes don't typically compete in the elite division where our other women teams in this squad do. So theirs are just slightly lighter, still tough nonetheless. Janae and Blair quickly getting to work, finishing their final round before they then can earn extra points on part one of three. We'll check in with Tara, the birthday girl, the RO, to see how much time we have remaining. Janae and Blair. Final round of rifle and then final round of pistol. What's the time? We got, oh, yeah, we'll just a second. Yep. Three minutes! Three minutes left! So three minutes left. Plenty of time for Blair and Janae to earn extra reps that sandbag carry. At last check, they were at least six percentage points ahead of the next best team. This squad started the day with the Echo Bike Yoke Hang. Quick little burner, gonna add to extra leg fatigue, but also grip fatigue, as hanging from the yoke is very different than hanging from the bar that you would see in the gym. It's much thicker, so they were allowing the athletes to cross their fingers. And then they also had their two gun stage. Not one that's going to add a ton of fatigue onto the event of today. But still extra time being out here in the sun. About 90 seconds, I think. So this is the portion where Blair and Janae will be earning extra reps. For their sandbag carry. A little bit of communication. Chamber flash in before you leave the line, please. One minute! One minute! So, since these ladies were so far ahead and no other team has been working on the additional sandbag carries, they are choosing to call that event because all of the athletes will have a two minute rest. But during that time, you do have to put your chamber flags back in your rifle, get all of your pistol, magazine, rifle back to the side. So they're choosing to go there early as they don't need any more points on that first part. And now they can enjoy a little over a two minute rest before we go to the second portion. Fifteen seconds left. V and Elba finishing up their pistol work.
And that's time we'll watch the athletes now clear up all of their equipment from the shooting stage. The next two parts of this stage, fitness only. We're going to go over because I can see Janae and Blair. They are already setting up their farmer's carry and then their axle bar. It's interesting because this is where teamwork, communication, and knowing what your strengths are, but also knowing what your teammates' strengths and even weaknesses are, because you can choose the loading however you see fit. One of the bars has to be held overhead for a carry down and back, and the other bar, you can choose a farmer carry anyway. We've seen some athletes choose what we would call a strongman style. Uh, I heard somebody refer to it as a duck walk. So a taller athlete, uh, not some of the smaller athletes, will put the bar in between their legs and do a bit of a waddle as they walk it. We've seen mixed grip in the front of the body, mixed grip behind the body. And I spoke to one athlete, he did actually choose to hold on to the bar in a farmer carry style. I don't know that that is the best strategy, but again, knowing yourself, knowing your teammate is going to be incredibly important. So this one, this is part two, seven minute time cap. And they're just earning reps here. They're earning reps going down and back. Athletes cannot change mid lane. Also something to know, also something to know is you can't use chalk. So Blair just decided to get a little spit on her hands, wipe it in the dirt to <laughs> help with that. Some athletes still loading their bar. That two minutes goes by quick. Blair jerks it overhead. Janae on the right hand of your screen carrying it with that mixed grip, wide grip farmer carry. And now on your screen to the left, V and then Elba to the right. These ladies, same strategy. So far it looks like everybody in this squad is using Same strategy here. Seven minutes though, seven minutes to just get this work done. Grip fatigue, muscular fatigue, all of those are going to play a factor in deciding what feels best for your body. What you start with might not be what you end with. If you're just tuning in, overall leaders, Blair Drum, Janae DeCossin, you could hear Blair say shut up when he said six minutes left. Yeah, the time is not going by fast. It is a grind. All the way in our fifth lane, this is the duck walk style that I was talking about let's see nope and she decided to change the strategy as we mentioned that's something that you'll see strong man strong women competitors do the duck walk in between the legs but again it's going to really depend on your body type because if your limbs aren't long enough it could feel a bit awkward This is one of those workouts that before you put on a tank top, you probably want to do. It's going to let those veins pop out, give you a bit of a pump. V on your screen right now, she's moving that nice and steady. Elbow with the axle bar overhead. Speed has definitely slowed down. But still moving. There will be one part after this one. 
three total parts in this stage. What did you just say? How can they help each other? So only for the farmer carry bar. So they have to go down with the axle bar, mm -hmm. drop it. Then the other partner would have to come back to wherever that uh, farmer carry bar is to help them. But they have to do it as a whole, uh, a whole down and back. They can't go down and then mm -hmm. find out that their partner can't do it. Have you seen any teams do that yet today? Yeah, we've had a couple teams do it today. Um, so you know, you just take the time penalty of having to run down, and run back. Mm -hmm. So. But it's a lot of weight for teams. It why, certainly can be. Fun at the teams. So. <laughs> that's why they're sponsored athletes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Janae moving really fast with that bar overhead. Let's check in with our judge. How many rounds have they completed thus far? Um, for this specific activity, they've completed three rounds. Three rounds. So down and back is one? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Three total down and backs. Amanda Cherry, how has watching teams been? Amazing. Do you want to do this ever? No. Should we do a team together? Yes. <laughs> and there you have it. Lauren Khalil, Amanda Cherry, we will be here next year on the other side of the camera. So if you could hear, Janae and Blair were trying to decide if it was worth bringing it down all the way down with the time remaining because they then have to bring the equipment back because the squad after them is going to be advancing to this portion. Janae thought it would be worth it. Blair said, nope, I'm going to hang out here. They will have two minutes now before they head to the third and final portion of this stage, which is shuttle runs for max reps. I was actually quite impressed with the speed at which some of these teams were doing shuttle runs because the time on the clock, it doesn't seem like a lot, six minutes, but after all that work you've already done, at the end of a long weekend of competition, and all you're doing is going back and forth. It can be incredibly daunting. I spoke to one team that was in the intermediate men's division, and they said they got upward of 50 shuttle runs. You did get that one point. Something else to notice, teams, one of the standards is they do have to hold on to this rope the entire time, so you can't have one athlete who's super fast and runs down and back and waits for you, they do have to go at the same speed. As for the other standard, not super complicated. If you're familiar with CrossFit, you'll notice that their standard is you have to touch the line for every rep. Here, all you have to do, we have our line there, you just have to touch one foot over for the rep to count. Third and final portion. Yeah. 
and they're off. So you can also notice that <laughs> the ground, one of the advantages is that it's uh, packed down a little bit more than it was this morning. I don't think these ladies are going to have much mud on their shoes. Where the men, they had a couple extra pounds of mud on their shoes. talking about how beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful gorgeous. <laughs> it's a gorgeous run so far when we're looking at the first little trip but kept going the first part when we saw the the pistol rifle shooting with the sandbag carry Janae and Blair had the best time but something that we have to factor in something that we figure out after the entire stage is complete is how accurate was their shooting and that goes into effect of what their final score is so sometimes the fastest athletes aren't necessarily the best shooters so visually you don't always know who's in the lead but we do know that they had the best fitness score because they made it to those additional sandbag par uh, carries on part one. We also know that they had the most down and backs of, and there is Star, the best photo bomber of the tactical games. Star, are you done for the day? No, I'm not done. I got one more. I did an echo bike. Are you going to burn it down? Burn it down, baby. How many calories are you going to get on that go bike? I don't know. What's what's average? What's, what's I want to see you get 43. Total? Like no, on the first one. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. She laughed. Based on that laugh, I think that's bad. That means you would hurt really bad. Okay. I think average is like, uh, like 25. Okay. I think Blair got 25. But Blair's a freaking monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you ride the echo bike either? How do you ride it? Just go, on, go all out. Yeah, try to use the same amount of arms as legs. Don't just go all arms or all legs. That's what the biggest mistake people make. Hey, you're fine. You're fine. Just so ride. I couldn't just ride you're okay. my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Star. Good luck. <laughs> distracting us, distracting us. Still looking really smooth. So, so far, overall leaders of the division, overall leaders of this specific stage. There is going to be time for arbitration. So that's any teams and or athletes that think there might have been a miscalculation with their score. Uh, they will have time to go and discuss it with our head judge. Nick Palacios, that's not his official title, but he is the man that you want to see for arbitration. I think maybe James Gill is involved as well. In well. Two and a half minutes left. Yep, so just one foot touch over the line. look in our lane next to Blair and Janae. Our team that's in second overall, Corinna and Mallory. This is the first time that we've seen these ladies this season, but not athletes that are new to tactical games. Both have a nice strong fitness background. Looking really smooth. What number are they on? 52. 52. Yeah. Dang. 52 with 90 seconds to spare. We'll take a look. What number are they on? 62. 62. Holy crap. Impressive. Got some coaching on the sideline, some encouragement. 
Hold on, keep going. Now is not the time to hold back. So I would imagine, knowing that Blair and Janae were about 10 shuttle runs ahead of our second place team, Corinna and Mallory, that there's mathematically no way that they could have passed them unless these two ladies just sat down. So I believe they will take the most rounds. Still incredible performance across all of these ladies. Let's catch up with them sitting in second overall heading into today. This is the first time we've seen both of you this season. Am I mistaken? Or is that correct? No, this is correct. Uh, first event of 2024 and first team event for us. Yeah. But what brought you two together to create a team, a super team we'll even call it? She somehow was crazy enough to think of me. <laughs> yeah, we met at our first Tactical Games event two years ago and thought it would be a great opportunity for both of us to get back out and knock off some rust. And um, yeah, we're here we are having a fun time. And here to celebrate our progress made yes. <laughs> over the last couple years. As of now, it looks like both of you will punch a ticket to nationals. Knowing that, will we still be able to see you guys at any other regional events as individuals this season? Oh yeah, I'll, yeah. we'll be there. Where we'll will you be? Um, I'm not sure yet, but Utah would be so much fun. So I definitely plan on that, maybe one beforehand. Yeah. I'm thinking of North Carolina or South Carolina, something on the East Coast. So right now it's just a fun opportunity to get out with your friend, add some touches. What has been your favorite stage of the weekend? I'd say the rope climbs for me. I felt like it was something that we could work really well together with. Yeah, I think uh, we, Mallory I know is not, her running is not her love. <laughs> and you saw so, me being dragged, <laughs> dragged past the finish line. So the she was such a trooper yesterday in the long run and uh, we got to see some cool wildlife at the same time. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. You guys, incredible performance. Um, unofficially, congratulations in qualifying for nationals, and we'll see you guys at the next event. Thank awesome. you. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks. Yay. I want to you. That's one of the great things about tactical games. You meet people out here, the community is strong, and you never know. Even if they're your competitor, one day they will turn into your teammate. You can see behind us in the forefront, the first part of three is the squad after these ladies. We now are going to upload this video for y'all. We are close to the award ceremony and then we are ending the day with a pig roast. So if you've had FOMO, yeah, this is the weekend to do it. This location, absolutely stunning. As the ladies we just interviewed mentioned, wild life on the run. I hate running, but if I saw a zebra while I ran, I wouldn't hate it that much. We hope to see you at our next Tactical Games event. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Let us know what content you want. We're having a lot of fun doing this, but it's all about you guys and bringing the community what they want to see. So drop us a comment, send us a message, and we'll see you guys for the next post.